recording this right now. I mean, this is priceless. Here, let me show you what I'm actually using right here. <laughs> um, you know, people would use a skateboard for a for a steady cam and sh- uh huh. Yes, <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's what I feel like today. Does this look okay? Or we we got a decent show? Okay. We good. Minus All the right, two so. straws that are sticking out in front of me. <laughs> That's from the 1980s and the cocaine era. Look, every time you pull them, more come out. <laughs> it literally is like the 1980s. You know, people used to carry around like stainless steel straws this big. Cocaine was that prevalent. Nice. You'll actually have accessories yeah. to carry around. <laughs> right. right. Exactly. I'm not saying me. I'm saying uh-huh. other people. <laughs> um, well, how is it like watching the 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 huge show known as uh, as the American political system from worldwide right now? <laughs> I think it's fun. <laughs> it's like watching The Apprentice yeah. all over again. <laughs> so, I am glad you made the comparative. I don't think other people understand that's what's happening. Mm-hmm. He literally like, just pits people against each other and goes, "Bye." I mm-hmm. mean, it. We are we are being punked so bad here. And I mean, legitimately punk sound. What are you trying to do? You just have the suns behind you. Quit trying to fix your hair. <laughs> I know. There's like one strand that has just gone that way. <laughs> you know how yeah, you honestly, know somebody has OCD? Right there. Sean, I think it is like brilliant in a way what he's doing for the sole reason that the normal population who doesn't really give a shit about anything, they see it as a branding thing they used to mm-hmm. dr oz so now they see him in charge of health right. or whatever I and know. they can make that connection and they think it's going to be super good and super efficient right. they're connecting tv shows to departments to make sure uh-huh. that the normal audience who voted without college degrees makes an association between the tv and the government which would be amazing for content driven policy making in the next four years right yeah i so I am I'm torn and I really mean this. I'm torn because I don't buy into the daily slap of stuff he throws out there because he's just doing that. The real serious stuff is the stuff you're not hearing about mm-hmm. where you're going to have a couple people move through, you know, on secretary of education. I'm happy Ryan Walters didn't get in because I know he's a nut job. But the other lady was a wrestling promoter. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. She actually was at the Small Business Administration for a couple of years. So she actually has a resume, not a good resume, a resume. Everybody he's putting in is TV ready. Mm -hmm. And and they know how to sell shit. Yeah. And what people don't understand is he brought him in to sell shit. Mm -hmm. And that's what this is all about. And look, hey, it's typical Donald Trump. If he doesn't get out of you what he wants, he moves on. I mean, he. Yeah. a lot of people will get fired. They'll be there a short period of time. Our specific guy here who's made a lot of national news now because he was like, God, oh, see me. Um, interesting. So we were supposed to have a state school board meeting today, and he canceled it because he's crying in his milk. But it may not be over yet. The McMahon lady, they've got some they, – they have things that don't matter to the Republicans. They've got some um, – kind of what you would say with the Catholic church, with the wrestling deal, they had uh, ring boys and mm-hmm. they were, you know, boys that came in to care of the ring, got everything ready. And well, evidently some guy was molesting them the whole time. And supposedly these folks knew yeah. now all you need to do in, in the Republican party, I don't even think you need plausible deniability anymore. You just, you just go, eh, it's a 72 hour press. I, am I wrong? I mean, am I missing yeah. something? Tell me 72 hour press cycle and it's gone. Yeah. So all you have to do is survive 72 hours. Matt Gates. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, Cheers. But that's There's a the lot big, of people with. Yo, go ahead. No, but think about media strategy. It's super smart in one way where all you're trying to do is not deny or prove that you're not guilty. You're just trying to survive for 72 hours before they right. get distracted with the news story and carry on. Right. Mm-hmm. All you have to do. I mean, it really and truly, um, they know the time it takes. And and look, the people that are getting distracted uh, or they're trying to distract aren't his voters. His voters don't really watch any TV that would even say anything bad was happening. Yeah. So, 
I'm pretty sure like you, some people just read the headline saying that Linda McMahon is in charge of something and they're like, oh shit, I love wrestling. She'll probably do a great right. job at this too. Right. That kind of thing. That's the association yeah. they make in their mind and carry on with but, their day. Let me ask you the truth, okay? Mm -hmm. Isn't fake wrestling politics? Yeah. because It's all for show. Mm -hmm. the, both sides are over here doing this and this and this and this and this and everybody's giving money. You, oh, this guy... And the reality is um, somebody behind the scenes is making a ton of money. I mean, wrestling is politics. Mm -hmm. you, know, you you put on the Ringland Bar Barnum and Bailey show out here doing this and this and this. And Ringling and Barnum is doing well in the back. Mm -hmm. you know? So I'm not, um, I'm not willing to write Trump off as crazy this time. Last time, I would say no decent people would work with him. Now, I think a lot of people just understand the whole thing's a charade. And how do I get my peace? Like Walters looked like a sissy because he kept going, Donald, Donald over here. Um, Donald thinks of himself as an A-type male. And mm -hmm. I don't know what he is. I mean, I, he, he seems pretty animalistic to me. I think that's a fair way to put it, predatory. Yeah. And, uh, and they don't like stuff like that. They, they want to chase in a fight and, you know, mm -hmm. but... <laughs> If the teachers union here was smart, they would have had a private investigator on Ryan Walters like yeah. yesterday, 24 seven, the blows out, the drinks are out, the hookers are out, you know, all this stuff. Sean, and if I don't you, have... me and a few other people got together, we would have had a private investigator, wouldn't we? <laughs> right. I know. So, um, so I had a couple of different meetings yesterday. So I, I, my, Last week on Thursday, we had a deal. They were putting up some signs out on the highway. I don't know if this means anything in India, but in America, mm -hmm. you know, they'll, uh, people can nominate people to have signage on the highway. So this is a memorial sign. And, um, and a bunch of the people from the Democratic Party showed up because my wife was a really active Democrat. I am a person that embarrassingly is just stuck with the Democratic Party because there's no other choice because the Republicans are so crazy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and this lady asked me if I would meet with the head of the party to see what we could do to fix things. And you go, well, I, I think she should step down is probably how we start. <laughs> mm -hmm. we, have, we have the same person in charge for six years here, and we've just gone this way. And it's nearly impossible to get people out because they surround themselves with their friends and family. Yeah. And what do you do? I mean, you just can't get rid of them. And so um, I, I think tomorrow or Saturday I'm supposed to have that meeting. So by the time this comes out, I will probably have already had it. But I don't I don't have any solutions other than, hey, I, I want to start a third party, but it's so hard you can't do it. So isn't this okay, you, wait, years ago in like 2014, I remember you talking uh, to me about either doing something independently or starting a third uh -huh. party. And we got right, shit right. from a bunch of people at the bar who are yelling at you to not do that. You'll dissolve right. or dilute the Democratic Party. And has like dilute it diluted what? itself. <laughs> They did it to themselves. But so, um, so now instead, instead of, all right, did, I, sorry, I just turned that instead of taking, you know, our straws <laughs> and, uh, and trying to figure out a way to make the bag of straws bigger. What we've done is now the straws are only this big and they can't accomplish anything. Mm -hmm. And, and so I don't want to sound like Donald Trump when I say this, but isn't that time to burn that thing down? and recreate it yeah do you know we have I, that thing oh we have that little saying in our like business development and sales where right. it's like fangless snakes because we've given the like did a you snake say without, fang f-a-n-g the snakes <laughs> fangless snakes <laughs> okay oh okay <laughs> It's basically like we've given these guys authority to go sell the product, but we've given them no negotiating room. So they have zero power and they're just sitting in random meetings where people are just getting bullied all the time type thing. <laughs> well, you and I would go into any meeting knowing we're going to negotiate. Mm -hmm. And we know what our parameters are. So it's unfair to send somebody else in as our representative. Yeah. I'm un 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 ready now. I, I, I can't entirely blame her on everything, but when you're in charge, you're the one that's at blame. Look, I, I've been the CEO of mm -hmm. many a companies and, and guess who's in charge gets their head cut off. That's, that's the way it works. 
And the money people are usually sitting behind going, damn it, I'm going to lose some money, but at least they're not getting their head cut off. So I don't know. I mean, you and I have watched this come about for what, about 10 years. And so it's not like it's a surprise to us. I'm just surprised that nobody steps down. Like they don't say I'm an abject failure, step down. Yeah, take responsibility type thing, right? Like, yeah. hey, guys, I, I kind of run this into the ground. <laughs> can somebody else take yeah. over and see if they can fix it? Maybe somebody else could do it. And and I understand down here in the South, it's hard. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's a black female, so it's even harder because there's a whole bunch of the population just won't look at her or talk to her. I mean, it, there really is. Yeah. So you're not going to get those people. But but if you're losing like 200,000 people in the last two years or the last six years have walked away from the party. And you go, that was a, that was over a third of the people. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I don't know, but it doesn't, that part doesn't matter to me as a 60 year old white guy. <laughs> Cause I'm to the end of all of this. Mm-hmm. But what I want to do is go, Hey, young people, you got, but young people didn't show up to vote. Yeah. And also shouldn't the young people have showed up to all your school board meetings and the protests that you'll have? And they don't, right? Yeah. Are they just protesting on fucking TikTok and Instagram and thinking that'll do it? Same old deal. Yeah. And you do a mean post out there or, you know, have you seen my thread? And you go, your thread doesn't vote. And and you and I are just practical, practical people. You go, okay, how do you win an election? You get one more vote than the next guy. Mm Mm-hmm. You don't have to win by landslide. You just need one more vote than the next guy. So no, it's like that I, thing, right? Do you, how do you, ask if you and your friend get chased by a tiger, you're not going to outrun the tiger. Yeah, that's you just right. need to outrun right. the guy next to you. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so true. So the, the question is, as you go back to um, the original George Bush ran against this guy and it began with a D and I can't remember the guy's name and he had a big nose and, uh, and he got into a tank with a helmet on the front of it and did a photo op. And it was. Oh, shit. Yes. The I remember. Mm. Single worst photo op in presidential history. The only thing worse was Jane Fonda in, a, in an American tank that the Vietnamese had killed the people in. You know, I mean, Jesus. <laughs> um, so that guy was the end of the Democratic Party. But eight years later, you had uh, Bill Clinton, mm-hmm. who was the real end of the Democratic Party because he brought, he got rid of labor money and brought corporate money in. And mm-hmm. so you were going after the same donors as the Republicans. So it, it we're getting ready for a, a shift, but I don't know how much like. And the reason I say all this is people go, what are you guys going to do? And I go, I'm, I'm probably not going to do anything. I mean, I'll help you organize, but I'm not doing the groundwork on this stuff. I've been doing the groundwork for 10 years. Nobody listened. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm not the guy. You find somebody else that maybe gets a bigger population to listen. The um, You look at it and go. So there's a Bill Clinton out there, but that doesn't mean when they change the party that it's for the better. Yeah. You know, and so we only have two parties here. And for people in India that don't understand, because you guys have about 100, mm-hmm. those are your those are your two choices. And most of the people now are joining the independents. Like, they don't want to be in either party because they both suck. Yeah. So would it be easier to get enough people into one of those. But you know what? You know what the deal is? You remember the part, the meeting you were at with me? Mm -hmm. Was it about two hours? Did we learn anything? No. Fuck off. Right. Was it a waste of two hours? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember complaining to you. I was like, Sean, I could have done so much in these two hours. I could have made money. Pint. (laughs) Right. I mean, it's it's sad. And, And people go, well, Hispanics need to be more involved. And you go, they're working. They don't have time for this. Like, I don't know. I have a strange feeling it might swing more toward the independent segment for the sole reason that there is it's going to it's going to be so hard to bring in all the different interests of the Democratic voters together and put them in one barrel and say, this is the candidate that's going to represent you because that (laughs) is going to look like they're having a schizophrenic breakdown if they had to fucking voice each person's opinion who's behind them supporting the Democrats. Right. Yeah. So, and, and, and Democrats literally, so transactional politics, we've talked about this before. Mm-hmm. Democrats can't do it. They have to be in love with a candidate. They have to like a candidate. And you go, how about they just do the policies and they're a decent human, and most of the time they'll vote the way you like. Mm-hmm. That's, not a, that's not enough. If you voted 95% with them and then that 5% not, they want to hang you, literally. 
Yeah. So, so I don't know. I mean, I am really, I was a political science major originally. I don't know if you know that, but I was. <clears throat> and I don't, I mean, I mean it when I go, this is going to be a weird study and see how it shakes out. Because here, I can help get people active that have not been active. Mm-hmm. But not new people, because they show up to a meeting and they're like, this, this is everybody? This is all yeah. you got? <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. Uh, anyway, I hey, th- let's talk about the national. When you get okay, finish. Sorry, I'm finish up. Sorry. I don't know. What about all the Democrats that ran this time and lost? Shouldn't they all like come together and try to figure out what to do with the party as a whole? Since they've been running, at least one of them I know has ran like twice and lost both times. Right. Shouldn't they kind of like get together and cohesively try to figure out? Because they're anyway going to be raising funds and fucking around with their campaigns. Why not go right. to the root cause of the problem, which is the fucking party's <laughs> right. existence itself right. is in question in Oklahoma. <laughs> so the way that works. So my wife was owned her own businesses. Mm-hmm. So nobody could really do anything to her. But they gerrymandered her. As you remember, the city she was mayor of, they removed from the district she was running for, for a position in. I her re- whole city. Right. And we don't. That's going to, in 10 years, that's going to turn out to have been a big deal. Mm-hmm. You know, like when she ran for lieutenant governor, her and Joe Dorman, both quality candidates. I saw Dorman yesterday. Yeah. That has turned out to be such an important election, and everybody thought it was a sleeper. Mm-hmm. Sleepers are what get you. So there is a woman named Madison Horn that you may be referring to. She's attractive. She's a cybersecurity expert, mm-hmm. whatever that means. Because none of us know. You might know what that means. We don't even know what that means. But you throw it out there and you go, okay, she sounds smarter than the next person. But she's articulate. She's attractive. She's from a rural part of the state. All that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, She would be the person you think I would sit down with and and go, hey, what can we do? Because in Oklahoma City, on this part of town, I think I might be the most well-known person on this part of of the city. Yeah. Um, Okay, and you go, but she's relatively conservative because she's from a a rural area. Mm -hmm. And I am a business person. So then the people on the far left would look at both of us and go, we don't want either one of you. And you Mm -hmm. go, well, you're not you're not enough. So how about we join together in this boat that's sinking and get rid of some water? (laughs) It is so difficult, Mm -hmm. so difficult. And the other side. They just vote to, to get rid of libs, man. You're just getting, they don't care what the policy is. They don't care what happens. Look, so, so let's talk about if you want to, if you want to segue to mass deportations. Okay. Cause that's the, <laughs> that's the headline of the day. Okay. Let me explain it in a way that people will go, Oh, that's not a bad idea. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you're, you're in the country um, without papers and you commit a crime. Yeah. Now, According to the United States laws, we can deport you for having been arrested for the crime. Mm-hmm. Now, that's some George Bush stuff. Because, um, you know, he, I mean, in all reality, do we really need to pay to put you to trial? That's, an, that's a British thing. Let's mm-hmm. get them healthy enough to kill them. <laughs> yeah. Right. But we can really just deport you. And so that's what the mass deportations are going to be. We are going to be Cuba. You remember when Cuba emptied all their prisons and sent them to America mm-hmm. and cocaine flourished a whole bunch? <laughs> I'm not saying it was directly Cuban, but it may have been. Um, so that's their idea, because I literally watched in depth the guy in Oklahoma, what he was actually saying. Okay. And that's what he was saying. So they're going to clear out the state prisons. And then the county jail is where you wait to go. They, they do that second. You know what? I'm not necessarily against that. That honestly doesn't sound that bad, right? If you're just right. like, if these people right. were arrested and are just sitting in prison waiting for trial or already been tried right. and they were there illegally, might as well just send then them Then you back. can roll. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and then what? And then so people get the photo op they want, the green buses with people going back to wherever. Um, I don't know where, where are you going. I mean, are we going to do that with all of them or are we just going to do that with the brown ones? Mm. Because, you know, my people are known for coming over here and committing crimes. They do crimes. Uh (laughs) And and, and the British come over here and do crimes. I mean, but inherently, politically, it's got to be brown or black. And they're 
you know, the Sudanese are just coming over here and making some good rice and working, mm. you know, and they're doing jobs. Americans literally, literally won't do or can't do anymore. Physically just can't do. So, um, so that one you go, okay, well, and they don't say it in a way that gets normal people to hear why are we paying to keep him in jail? Now, the thing I don't like is you're getting removed from the country without being convicted because mm. we should know whether you did it or not. Yeah. I mean, what if you were, what if literally it was a mistaken identity where people go, yeah, was that person? Then the, how do you know? Is then when you know all them people look alike, they were right <laughs> here. I mean, yeah, it does make most sense if it was like the people who had already been convicted and found guilty right. type thing. Right. Uh-huh. Hmm. That's pretty much it. And then, so have you invited them to come back in the country when you just sent them to the northern part of Mexico and for $1,500, they're back in the U.S. And if they were rapists and murderers, um, you just let them come back in. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it, it's got enormous flaws, but I understand how they're going to play it out politically. You know, mm-hmm. even from low end cable news, they will get a few buses driving away. Yeah. Yeah, the wag the dog theory. You know, I did it, I did it, I did it. Until one of them comes back in and they've already been convicted and we let them out and that's when all that shit stops. That's the way it works. Yeah. Weekend furloughs. You remember weekend furloughs from prison where you could go get laid over the weekend? <laughs> and then and then one guy goes out and murders somebody and cooks them and, and eats them and no more furloughs. Yeah, that that was uh, ruined it for everybody, huh, Sean? <laughs> ruined it for everybody. A little cannibalism goes a long way. And you know, you you hate to be so sarcastic about it, but but it does make for good coverage and good a good show. But yeah, that's is that going to be the title of our show? A little cannibalism goes a long. <laughs> <laughs> is I just got notified because because it's Trump being elected, right? I'm pretty sure Bitcoin's going to call cross a hundred thousand dollars. It's right now it just went up to ninety eight. Yeah, well, all the well. all the coin bros that I know here are super excited, including the guys in Dubai. Well, God bless them all for for mm-hmm. being there. I, you know, his it'll be interesting to see what his Truth Social does before and after. And like, I, I mean, see, John Oliver actually had a really good point where before when he ran, his businesses went like directly correlated to like governance from the federal level. Whereas this time, if you look at his crypto venture and you look at the social media stocks, those there are like federal laws that will go into play that can or cannot make those companies profitable. And you know which one he's going to do because if he legalizes crypto completely and says like how in, I think it was Arizona where you can pay your taxes with cryptocurrency. Yeah, don't ask me how they pass that law. But if he does that on like a national level, yeah. It becomes legit. And his business you... is worth close to what Musk or a Bezos is. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, originally we all thought he was just trying to stay out of jail. Here's, here's the best thing that I would tell anybody from some other country watching this that's scared or nervous. He rarely accomplishes his goals. Mm-hmm. As long as you're not the party he's picking on, like people trying to come across to work since we can't get people to work here. Mm. I mean, it seems like a nice deal, but put razor wire up and harm babies, you know, and he doesn't mind doing it. And it makes for good TV and the the low information voters that he's going for. They see him at least doing something. Yeah. So, you know, the clip you sent me, I need the clip, not the YouTube one. If you send me that link, then let's talk about it real quick. But I need to clip because it doesn't work for TikTok and Facebook doing the YouTube. To keep, then people got to click on it and go to it. Mm-hmm. Um, so you you sent me a clip of me saying if Joe Biden wanted to save the Democratic Party, what he needs to do is arrest the CEOs of the companies that were taking advantage of us during COVID and yeah. do a perp walk. And what a perp walk is, is literally cops are walking you and you're in the orange jumpsuit and it's humiliating and you're on the front page of every paper. And I wholeheartedly believe that is what needs to happen to end this. And that's all anybody will ever talk about about his career is mm-hmm. he finally did something. So yeah. India is so big, you guys are probably used to people not doing anything. Mm-hmm. We send people in and really do expect them to do stuff for us. 
Chanel are young and hopeful. <laughs> We're kind of right. jaded and given up. <laughs> right. Yeah. We're only 200 years old. You guys have been playing this game longer. And, but we've never had like a British occupation like you live through. Mm-hmm. We're the occupiers. Yeah. I mean, I literally, think, I, still. I think that's where the hope comes from. Yeah. It's because we're like, hey, still we barely in charge. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. If they're in charge, why can't we get things done for our own people type thing? Right. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. But I, I look at that and I go, that is the single biggest thing they could do. And we'll see how it plays in social media. Because I did, a, I did a dad talk to Ryan Walters yesterday, the guy in charge of, state school superintendent. And those things used to get me about maybe 50 or 60,000 views on TikTok. I've been slowed down drastically. And even that one's viral and it's only 25,000 views. <laughs> Can I tell you something hilarious? Yeah. Like, uh, I happening? did almost four or five shows in Bombay last week. And one of the right. shows, it was a late night show. And the audience was like older, educated audience because I was right. hearing what the host was doing, yeah. his crowd work. And in between that, I was talking about corruption and I was talking about Ryan Walters. And I looked at one of the ladies in the front row and I was like, don't ask me why, but I hate the damn guy that I've been yelling about it in a different country where you don't even vote for him. <laughs> I do not know why I'm taking it out on this stage. <laughs> right. Exactly. Well, because isn't he the photo of everything um, leading up to the Third Reich? I mean... Mm-hmm. He literally is is the exact thing in the way he talks and his movements and you know the white power signs and all this other stuff. So you and I see the media he's playing and he's mm-hmm. good at it. And he oh, doesn't dude, mind looking like it. praying on camera. I was like, God damn. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So but religion sells here. Mm-hmm. Yep. It sells specifically in the southern part. So I had somebody go, I don't understand, Sean, you know, I mean, why do you care about any of this? And I said, well, I mean, I haven't seen the church do a power grab in my lifetime. Mm-hmm. And when I say the church, I mean the Catholic church, not some other church. Yeah. They are on a power grab down here. And the organization is still run like it was a thousand years ago. There aren't any women in charge. Now, why do we want 100 percent men? who aren't in relationships and won't have children making decisions for us. Yeah. I mean, they, they don't live in our society. Mm-hmm. Like, like, not necessarily as bad as cloistered monks, but the second degree away from it, you know, you're given power because you took a job. You get to determine things because you're the only one there because everyone else left. Mm-hmm. I mean, very young people are in positions they would never have gotten 50 years ago and coming off of an abuse circuit that bankrupted the place. Yep. So how do you keep, there's even, there's not even people to put up guardrails. True. And they're known for hiding stuff and they have excellent attorneys, excellent attorneys. So everything plays out for 20 years and they just wear you down. That, mm-hmm. That's who you want in charge. Because we've done this in Europe. I mean, you know, what's weird is in England, you weren't dealing with the Catholics were in charge first, and then the Protestants were in charge, and Henry VIII was the turn of all that. You know what I knew about Henry VIII when I was in school? That he killed his brides. I had no idea he was the one that changed the religion. Mm -hmm. No idea. He honestly did that yeah. only because right. <laughs> the church was like, listen, we can't keep doing this with you. And he was like, right. all right, here you go. New church. <laughs> the hell with you all. Right. So Henry VIII was the Donald Trump of politics back then. And mm-hmm. he couldn't get rid of it. So I don't, uh, I'm interested to see where all this goes. I see Christian nationalism here. It's, it's, it's on the table now. Mm-hmm. It's being served. And we have to see if there's enough backlash or not to see whether it survives. Yeah. Yeah. Look, the the fact is 90% of white women vote Republican that vote 90%. And everybody looks at this and says, this is the problem. No, that's not the problem. You can get half of this vote. Mm -hmm. 10% of the other one sways every election. If they move to 15%, it it literally changes the tide. That's when Obama gets elected. Yeah. And so I think there's a come to Jesus moment with suburban white women where people have to sit down and go, we know you like your life, but you're killing the rest of us. You know, something along those lines. Mm-hmm. And 
And you can yell at them all you want. They're going to do whatever the hell they please. No, oh, these are not women. Anybody gets to tell what to do, I, and they've proven that. Mm-hmm. They voted for this guy. Ninety percent. Yeah, but it's not going to negatively affect their kids. Mm. Yeah. Right. <laughs> if they defund the schools and get rid of the uh, the federal uh, um, education system, which which really doles out money to the needy. Mm-hmm. And so if you had a special needs kid, it affects you. But other than that, if you live in suburbia, it really doesn't affect you that much. It's one out of every nine dollars going into public schools. Yeah. You lived in Edmond, Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. I don't know how you survived, but you lived there. And uh, and so it'd be one of nine of their dollars. Mm-hmm. But they can just raise their property taxes. Everybody has a little bit of money. Yeah. And they don't care what happens to other women. They really don't. They care what happens in their home. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I know. Okay, before we go, here's a quote I made last night. I was talking to this group that advocates for children, and I said, I just want nice Jesus back. I don't know who this mean Jesus is, but I don't like him. I want nice Jesus back. And this lady was like, literally tears. <laughs> and I go, well, you know, I, I don't know. It, I wish you were here because we could have way better discussions over hours and hours and hours. I know. <laughs> And the, the only difference is most of our listeners, and I would say most people everywhere, do not understand the nuance of manipulating the press. Mm-hmm. And it is in full cycle. And, and look, the press needs to sell ads. The fact that Joe Scarborough, this guy that has a morning news show here on MSNBC, went him to Mar-a-Lago. And his, and his wife went Donald. down and did a meeting with <laughs> Trump where he was like, oh, like somebody was these things. <laughs> right. Yeah. How do we make peace with you, Donald? We need ratings. Mm-hmm. No, God. Right. Exactly. <laughs> That's where I live. All right, brother. Um, 